how many takes will this take? In three, two, one. Make sure the mic's on. Hello, welcome back. If you've never been here before, I'm Ron. Glad to have you here. Plenty of things to talk about today, but first let's just start off with a few clips from the beaches of New Jersey shores. Now, remember it's still March here, so it's still pretty cold out. And I brought with me all my toys today. I have the iFlight Camara 4, that's the 4S version with me, the newest iFlight Nazgul Evoke. It's 4S HD version, which replaced the one that I sank into the Pacific a while back when I was in Oregon. The video is here if you missed that one. It's a lot of fun to watch if you're not me. And I purchased the iFlight Nazgul Evoke with my own money. So this is not a sponsored video in any way. My new Evoke has Crossfire built into it with the TBS Crossfire nano receiver and GPS wired into it. The nice thing about the current version of the Nazgul Evoke is that it has the DJI Vista camera in it, which gives both the four by three and the 16 by nine aspect ratios, which I really prefer. And I say this because the earlier version of the Evoke that I had used a different or onboard camera. It had the Cadex Polar camera and you could only get 16 by nine. There was no four by three aspect ratio available. So nicely done, iFlight. Seems like they're listening to their customers. And again, this is the newest one you'll buy online in 2022. And of course, I'm filming with my GoPro 10 Black and some ND filters as well. Affiliate links below if you're at all interested in knowing more about the gear I'm using in 2022. And if you've been to my channel before, you know I ride my One Wheel XR to many of the spots that I like to fly. So today I'm flying with two different radios. I'm still using the DJI FPV controller and I'm getting comfortable with my newer TBS Tango 2. The version I have of the Tango 2 is the version four board. So I can go up to one watt of power output from it. And for those of you who might not know, the Tango 2 controller has TBS Crossfire built right into it. With that being said, I'm kind of glad I waited to buy the newer controller because the earlier version only had a max power output of 250 milliwatt, which is probably more range than anyone needs most of the time, but it's still nice to have the option of going up to one full watt. So after I was done flying at the beach, I like to offload all of my footage from the GoPro 10, just in case something happens, uh, which leads me into my next video clip. And I'm still playing around with all the crossfire settings in the Tango 2. Plenty of stuff to muck around with and dial into uh, all my settings. So the following day I went to another flying location and I quickly learned that I can still easily fail safe, even with crossfire if I get too far behind some trees, like in this case, some pine trees, and we'll show that clip right here as well. Now, for a few minutes there, I did think that I might have lost my brand new second Nazgul Evoke and my GoPro 10. Fortunately, after looking at the DVR playback in the goggles, I had a pretty good idea of where it had actually gone down. I recovered the quad, the props were a little dirty, but nothing broken or bent. The only damage was to the GoPro 10. And I can tell you from experience, those back screens do crack quite easily. Um, so be careful. Now, fortunately, the GoPro 10 does still work. I just can't use that back screen. The front screen still lets me know 
when I'm recording and if I need to change my settings, I'll just do that from the GoPro app in my, in my actual iPhone. And I've got one more clip to share with you. And this is from the third location I was flying this past weekend. Again, just dialing in some of the settings, getting comfortable with moving between the two controllers. One thing I'm definitely going to play around with more is one of the settings within the Crossfire Nano Receiver menu. There's an RF profile setting within the Tango 2 script where you can lock the Crossfire into fixed frequency or let it select it for you by the quality of the link. In all my flights to date, I was hard set to 150 hertz, and this was based on a few videos I saw online, including one that I had recently seen from Joshua Bardwell just a few months back. Now, I think JB's logic was that even though you're locked at 150 hertz, you will probably outrun the 1.5 gigahertz video or VTX link. He indicated he runs 150 hertz on all his Crossfire builds and he doesn't have any issue with the LQ or the link quality. And he mentioned in his video that uh, if his video feeds good, then his Crossfire link is usually good as well. But even with that said, I wanted to play around with this a bit. I'm going to change my own settings from the 150 hertz to dynamic, and I'll explain why in a second. Just know you can set your RF profile to one of three separate settings. You can, you, you can either set it to dynamic, 150 hertz, or 50 hertz. And all of this is explained further in the actual TBS Crossfire user manual as well. Now, in 150 hertz mode, the manual says this is useful if you're racing and you want the lowest latency during the entire flight. However, your range is limited, so you should only use this for racing or race-like situations. So in dynamic mode, Crossfire selects the RF profile based on an internal algorithm, based on the quality of the link. Uh, it will switch between 150 hertz in, ide in ideal conditions and 50 hertz when the link is no longer perfect. This can happen many times per second, and it's recommended as the best setting in most cases. Again, dynamic modes recommended by TBS in their manual. So again, just dialing in my own settings. If you're using Crossfire in your setup, I'd love to hear if and why you're using the 150 Hertz RF profile or dynamic RF profile in your Crossfire receiver settings. I suspect that a lot of the folks who use the dynamic setting and those who use specifically DJI FPV goggles uh, also use the DJI goggle hack as well. So you can increase the power output and range from your actual DJI goggles. And specifically, I'm referring to the hack where you can get up to 1200 milliwatt max power output from your goggles. People who have tested this have gotten as far as 13.3 uh, kilometers or 8.2 miles on just the video link. Now, I don't have a reason to test these limits myself, but I do find the results very interesting. And for those who may be new to FPV, just be prepared to spend quite a bit of time sorting through a lot of information. I'm finding it's really the only way to piece together the best flight setup and get the best FPV experience. Now I say this because even with a bind and fly quad, like the iFlight Nazgul Evoke, there's lots of little tips and tricks out there to get the most out of your FPV setup. And we didn't even talk about the Crossfire or Betalink link quality or LQ OSD values in the DJI FPV goggles. If you're thinking of buying this bind and fly setup with Crossfire, that's another topic you may want to research because the DJI goggles do not fully support the Betaflight OSD. And things keep changing based upon the version of Betaflight that you might be using. I know there were some improvements in the newest version of Betaflight 4.3. But as of this video, the iFlight Nazgul Evoke is still being shipped with the older version of Betaflight, Betaflight 4.2, which requires its own specific setup to monitor the Crossfire link quality in the DJI goggles. So with all that being said, 
I'm not sure if you find this type of video helpful. Let me know in the comments below uh, because I do struggle with finding a good balance between providing technical information versus you know losing the attention of my audience. Don't forget to say hello in the comments. Until next time, be safe, happy flying, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.